Friday morning and we are glad to have you join us on iBrand Jaybreak. I am Perpetua Fasabi Peter, welcoming you to this beautiful and amazing show. I'm not alone, I've got Samson Oloyede. <laughs> I can't dance, it's okay. Don't make a comment about it. <laughs> let, let me greet the, you know, the, the viewers first before we delve <laughs> Good morning, folks. Welcome to another edition of iBrand Daybreak. As always, it is the Friday edition, and you know what to expect talking about the best of entertainment discussions when it comes to the show itself. I'm Samson Lady once again. And um, yes, now I think I have your time. Um, I've told you times and again to teach me gay gay, but you've refused. What's so you, it's a dance, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I want to learn it. <laughs> well, what makes you think I can dance? I mean, I've seen you do gay gay before. I mean, in the office, we're just we're playing music, and then uh -huh. you were doing this. I was yeah, like, okay. That, you know, you have people who can dance on the chair. Uh, so or, you're on one the of them. Seat. Not, not, not on the dance floor, you know. Oh, that's interesting. But anyways, um, it's it's good to dance. You know, beyond being a form of exercise, it's also a means to express oneself. You mm -hmm. know, in terms of delight. And enthusiasm so um maybe you how much do you have let me take you on dancing classes no never mind that's okay it's it's not that it's not that serious <laughs> <laughs> all right it's everyone day break we're gonna very quick time out and when we return like my colleague already said we'll have the news update and a lot more lined up for your listening pleasure stay with us
Thanks for staying tuned. That's still Ivan Daybreak. Now it's time to bring you up to speed with news breaking forth around the world, and definitely we'll start from the home front. President Muhammad Buhari has arrived in Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia, and for the 35th session of the Assembly of the African Union Heads of State and Government. It was received by the Ethiopian Minister, Prime Minister. It was received, I beg your pardon, by the Ethiopian Minister of Education, Professor Benu Nega and Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshino, disclosed this on Friday. And still uh, from the home scene, the federal government says it has uncovered 96 financiers of terrorism across the country, especially those back in Boko Haram and Islamic State of West Africa province, Iswap. This was disclosed by Minister of Information and Culture, al Haji Lai Mohammed, during a press conference on the administration's fight against corruption in Abuja on Thursday, February the 3rd. He said, and I quote, Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, NFIU, in 2020 to 2021, revealed 96 financiers of terrorism in Nigeria, while 424 associates and supporters of the financiers were also uncovered, end of quote. Also, about 123 companies and 33 BDCs were linked to terrorists, in addition to 26 suspected bandits and kidnappers, and several conspirators who have now been identified. According to the minister court, the analysis has resulted in the arrest of 45 suspects who will soon face prosecution and seizure of assets. End of quote. Still on terrorism financing, Lai Mohammed said the NFIU had intelligence exchanges on Boko Haram, ISWAP, banditry, kidnapping, and others with 19 countries. During the same period, the organization returned fraudulently obtained funds totaling 103 million US dollars. 3,000 pounds sterling, 7,695 Singapore dollar, and 1,091 euros to 11 countries of victims who came into the country. Moving on now to the international scene, the leader of Islamic State died when he blew himself and family members up during a U.S. military raid in Syria, the President of the United States, Joe Biden, said on Thursday, dealing a blow to the jihadist group's efforts to reorganize as a guerrilla force after losing large swaths of territory. Abu Ibrahim al Ashemi al Karushi had led Islamic State since the death in 2019 of its founder Abu Bakr al Baghdadi, who was also killed when it detonated explosives during a raid by U.S. commandos. As U.S. forces closed in on Karashi in northwestern Syria overnight, it triggered a blast that also killed members of his own family, including children, according to Biden and U.S. officials. The blast was so big it hauled bodies out of the three-story building where Karashi was and into surrounding streets in the town of Antmer, U.S. officials said, blaming Islamic State for all civilian casualties. Still on the international scene, Russia has formulated several options as an excuse to invade Ukraine, including the potential use of a propaganda video showing a staged attack. The United States said on Thursday as the Kremlin condemned American troop deployment in the region. Russia, which seized Crimea from Ukraine in 2014 and backed separatists in the east of the country, is demanding security guarantees, including a promise NATO will never admit Kyiv, as it has amassed some 100,000 troops near the Ukrainian border. The United States has said there is little chance of Ukraine joining NATO soon, but that the country should decide its own future as the powers clash over their spheres of influence in post-Cold War Europe. U.S. intelligence believes Russia could use a fabricated video showing the graphic aftermath of an explosion, including equipment appearing to belong to Ukraine or allied nations to justify an incursion. I'm going on a quick break right now. When we return, we'll delve into the news headlines making our dailies today. Please do stay tuned.
are taking us through the stories making rounds on the dailies today. The first being from the Punch Paper, and it reads PDP CSOs lampoon federal government as NFIU uncovers 96 terrorism financiers. And we have right as to the story, the first being 123 firms, 33 BDC operators linked to terrorist federal government alleges. And um, terror financiers, supporters will be revealed in court, says AGF office. The third, with, with transparency's verdict, Buhari can't boast of fighting graft, and that's according to the People's Democratic Party. Moving away from the banner headline, we have Kano Sokoto absent as APC inaugurates state chairman amidst heavy security. That's on page 13. And then we have Ahanese inaugurates lobby panel, restates Igbo presidency's benefits. That's also on page 13 of the Punch paper today. Another story you'll find on page 10 reads, Nin Sim Linkage. Security agencies get Buhari's nod to access subscribers' details. Okay, away from that, Zulum warns about ISRAP threat, insists on hiring machineries. That's on page 2. On page 19, we have REP subsidy, refineries, repairs, panel, may invite NNPC and marketers. Simply put, REP subsidy and refineries, repairs, panel, may invite NNPC and marketers. Away from that, Kwara Baptist School shot as fresh crisis erupts over hijab. King Makers nominates Lekon Balogo as new Olubado. You'll find that on page 17. And then courtroom overcrowded as Ogun teenage killers arraigned, remanded. That's on page 5. Agbekoya threatens to free Igboho through traditional means. And of course, they're saying magical powers. That's on page 9. Tension as hoodlums attack Arabe Shola's faction secretariat. Arabe Shola faction secretariat suspect arrested that's also on page nine and on page 17 we have police smash lagos about a highway kidnap syndicate gang members flee and finally on page eight we have okorocha meets buhari alleges harassment by efcc politically motivated now moving on to the guardian newspaper the major headline here reads one year after nin sim policy insecurity scams fester and you have writers to that story bandits kidnappers Contact, um, collect ransom in millions. You also have Nigerians' real losses as SIM swap fraudsters empty bank accounts. Another writer reads, no security operative has asked for database into the rescue victims, Pantani claims. That's the minister there talking. And the final writer to the story is, NIN's issued its 73 million as enrollment centers across across 4,000. And um, to the earpiece of the paper, you have Tura Yeradwa's Cancer Center abandoned 12 years after raising billions. That story you can find on page 6 of the Guardian newspaper. Another story here reads, APC inaugurates 31st state chairman as Buni stays away. And that's on page 3. Boko Haram may, may be child's play to ISWAP Zulum wants federal government. That's also on page three. And you have Amechi Malami sued over alleged illegal award of 91.7 billion naira real contract to Chinese firm. The story is also on page three. And finally, on the Guardian newspaper, only 11% of Africans vaccinated against COVID-19. Who is speaking? Find that out on page four of the Guardian newspaper. And moving on to this day paper, the banner headline here reads, Zulum. We must defeat Israel at all costs, else Boko Haram will be child's play. This story has three riders. The first is, says it's time to consider hiring mercenaries. Another one, canvases change in security agencies' recruitment process. And the third, government tracks, identifies 96 financiers, 123 companies, 33 BDCs, others involved in terrorism. Away from that story, PIA, House Moves to Transfer Defunct National Oil Corporation's Assets to NNPC Limited. Away from that, uh, the 2021 Sukuk Proceeds Checks. Well, you may get uh, a copy of, the, of this day paper to read up on that. 2023, PDP yet to take a decision on zoning presidency. Wodo insists. That's on page 49. APC formally informs INEC of February 26th convention date. That's on this day paper. In major setback for oil production, Shell defies expansion work on 225,000 barrels per day Bonga oil field. That's on page 8. And then we have ECOWAS to deploy stabilization force in countries under threat of military takeover. And we have a rider. 
or Shimbaju saying democratic election only way to government change. And that's all from Thursday paper today. Finally, we'll review the nation newspaper where the headline here reads, Buari rebuffs lobby to shift APC convention dates and the writer reads, no venue in party's notification letter to INEC. State chairman inaugurated. You also have the stand first that reads Salami, technology key to speedy justice delivery. Uh, you, and you also have three policemen shot dead. Zulum warns on ISWAP's threat to Nigeria that you can find on the, um, the nation newspaper with a writer here reading Federal government to arrange 45 for sponsoring terrorism. 96 Boko Haram bandits financiers uncovered. And at the earpiece of the paper, you have Ladoja joins I Chiefs to endorse Balogun as Olubadon. That story is on page 27. You also have Ijabro resurfaces in Kwara State, and that's on page 2. The writer to that story reads, One feared killed in violence. And finally, you have Oshun APC governorship primary to hold February 19th. That's on page 27. While on page 28, you have Nigeria rejects coup as means to change the government. And that's it on newspaper um, you know, reviews. W which headline really is striking to you? Because um, the, the whole APC you know, crisis... You know, we've been talking about it for we've a been while talking now. About I was wondering if you're still interested. But then the fact that uh, we have the president who, of course, is speaking up. Uh, rebuffing the leader of the party. To, definitely. Rebuffing any move to extend the date. I think that's a good thing. But then we have a writer that says that in the letter that was given to INEC, no there was venue. no venue. Yes. Yeah, so um, I, I guess it's still part of, okay, you know what? Uh, we wanted to hold on the 26th, and uh, between now and maybe then we'll conclude and then we'll, we'll, we'll get Tw our answer. 26th together is just 22 have... days away. Oh, today's, today's 4th. Yeah, yes. just 22 That's, days that, away. They have three weeks, or let's say they have a week or two to you know, put things together. A week, I, I guess, really to put things in order so they can have. A good one. Apparently, another letter will be transmitted to INEC to, you know, specify the, the, the why, venue. Why, why were they in a hurry to, to transmit that letter? Well, because they want to secure the date or something? There's the place of securing the date. There's also the place of putting lobbyists in check. That this is certain, this will go on. You know, again, it's all about the underpinnings, you know, the various political moves and all of that. And I think um, the president, as the leader of the party, is just trying to ensure that the convention goes ahead as planned. But here's the thing. You had 34 state chairmen inaugurated yesterday. The caretaker committee chairman was absent. Buni stayed away. That tells you it speaks volumes because indirectly he is the national chairman of the party. So if the national chairman of the party stays away from the inauguration of 34 state chairmen, that's a big one. It's a big one. And and, it's a statement. And it's a statement. It speaks volumes. So it just shows you that there, there are so many um, internal strives within really need the party that with. needs to be dealt with, not just on the state level, but also on the federal level. And when you have just 12 months to a presidential election, that's not good news, especially for a ruling party. Well, for me, I want to believe they'll be able to get their acts together before, uh, before you know, it becomes late. And they're talking about PDP. Are, are we sure they don't want to zone, or what do you think is happening? Well, again, you know, politics come into play here. Certain folks feel like they're more competent than, you know, others from certain regions. And um, it's all about the best chance. Remember, politics is a game of numbers. So you're looking at a candidate who can command the numbers, someone who has the followership, who has the structure in place. And when you compare those within the South from the party to those in the North, it looks more like the North has, you know, the... the, 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 the more um, formidable forces, for, forces or, or candidates. Ground. Perhaps, perhaps, <laughs> okay. the only person from the South within the PDP who has showed interest will probably be Wiki, who you can reckon with. But what's Wiki's, you know, stance when it comes to the Northern part of the country? That's where the numbers are. So if Wike cannot command at least half of the votes from the North, it's a bit worrisome for you know PDP to um, bring him on board as their candidate. So it's all about permutations, looking at the various possibilities, who commands more, and that's where you know um, it gets intriguing when it comes to politics. Well, we'll look forward to what uh, what they will come up with eventually. Then let's talk about ECOWAS saying that they are going to uh, deploy forces to places they feel have that threat. Well. It, uh, it's a joke. Let, How let, would you let, call it a joke? <laughs> it's a joke because um, it's obvious the sanctions ECOWAS are coming with are not working. There was the, the sanction against Mali. I mean, Mali had two coups in about eight months. It didn't stop Guinea 
from you know being taken over in terms of mil uh, military coup you've had we just had guinea bissau days back it was unsuccessful unsuccessful but that was after five hours of serious gun battle while we're still you know expecting more data in um, you know in terms of figures mm -hmm. casualties and all now the the difference between previous coups over the last 18 months and that of guinea bissau was um is this um, guinea bissau was more bloody Others were more like your palace schools where the transition was bloodless. Mm -hmm. You know, Alpha Conde was deposed, um, Kabore, Burkina Faso it was deposed. You just have a, a, a situation where the president is detained, more like an house arrest, and then the transition is seemingly seamless. seamless yes. Unlike what we saw in Guinea Bissau, that it was serious, it was bloody, you know, it, it, unsuccessful. It reminds you of the important. dark days we as a nation also had to go through, you know, in the 60s. But here's the thing. The sanctions ECOWAS have put in place in terms of, oh, we will we, we, we place sanctions, we ban you, you know, you are suspended from the mem mem member body and all of that. It didn't stop other coups from happening. As I said, the, you had Guinea Bissau after um, Guinea, after Ma uh, Mali. You had Burkina Faso after Guinea. -Bis um, Guinea. You had Guinea Bissau, which was unsuccessful. So ECOWAS needs to come up with new strategies to ensure that you know they promote democracy now when they anyway, talk about there's, there's really a lot to talk about but we need okay. to go now <laughs> all right we're going to very quick time out and when we return we'll launch you into the next segment stay with us glad to have you back when it comes to entertainment on the continent nigeria's status and influence cannot be ignored from having the second largest movie industry in the world to the most recognized music with globally known music artists nigerian entertainers lead the way as africa makes its mark in entertainment worldwide earlier in the week ibrand tv saw mobile and the had a chat with music artist manager aliu mahmoud and one of his artists Take a listen. The music industry is today known as a major provider and contributor to youth empowerment and employment. Its current value is not just known as a provider of food for the soul, it is also a provider of food for the pocket. Hello and welcome to the entertainment segment of iBrand Daybreak. My name is Omobolanli Adeshui. Today on the show, I've got two guests in the house. I have with me Aliyu Mahmoud, a rapper and music artist manager. Good morning to you, Aliyu. Good morning. I also have right here Hak, who is a rap artist and a singer. Hello, Hak. Hi, good morning. <laughs> Your name, actually, maybe I should start with that. Hak. Sounds like a hacker <laughs> or something. No, 
full name is Helios. Abdul Haq. Oh, okay. It's an Islamic name, like an Arabic name. Ah. Uh. Um, and it means the truth. So your stage name is Hack, just yeah. to make it funky. Yeah, just uh, interesting. Okay, so let me come to you as a music artist manager, Lee. What does it entail? What does it mean to be a music artist manager? Um, actually, it's uh, all about um, getting to see what other people can see. I'm a can't music see or can't see? Can't see. Okay. Uh, because uh, uh, you, you, you're actually dealing with um, the fact you have to nurture and uh, talent sometimes it's not really the basic thing you need from an individual i personally feel discipline is the mm. basic uh, quality you need to have and uh, it takes a while to actually know who is disciplined and who is not mm. so and, uh, so that is what you look out for as a yes, music artist yeah, manager. even the fact that uh, naturally we're dealing with talented people naturally naturally so uh, I, I I tend to go for discipline, really, to um, search for discipline, qualities, when I'm actually dealing with individuals and um, the zeal. Mm. That's, that's the second uh, quality as well, because into her, into no, no, you you are going into qualities now. I want to know what it takes, like what I think you look into as a manager to say, okay, this is what I want to do, or this is what it takes to be a music artist manager. Yeah, you know, um, as I said, basically, like, um, the fact that I'm actually into uh, managing um, artists, uh, definitely they have to be talented. So they have the talent already, really. But sometimes um, in this business, um, talent don't really um, take you far. What takes you far is um, discipline, hard work, uh, dedication. Okay, you're still talking about the artist, but I'll just let you be. Maybe you think about it. I'm saying look in, looking at yourself as a music artist manager. Sure. Okay, let me come to Hack. Hack, you were telling me just before the show that you've been doing this for 10 years. Tell yeah. us, how has the journey been? Yeah, the journey has been great. Like, And I feel it was kind of easy for me to blend in because right from time i've always been surrounded with music mm. and the whole thing became serious. when you say surrounded with music how do you mean your family like members family are members musically are inclined musically inclined they are lovers of music and i have cousins that are into music stuff like that so it actually became serious when i started working in a studio in my neighborhood okay so i started mu um, music production that is beat production so then i started rapping and singing so do you also write? Do you write your songs? Yeah, I write my songs. So do, have you experienced, so I know that for writers, there are times when they experience this writer's block where nothing is just coming, there is no inspiration. Do you experience that? Yeah, like I feel music is actually a mood. It gets like what you are feeling at the moment. And sometimes it's just like fiction, like your idea. Mm. Do you get inspired yeah. by things that happen in the country? Yeah, or things that things that happen like my personal life um things that happen in my environment and ideas too you do afro beat and rap why yeah. did you choose that niche i do afro fusion like afro pop i also i rap and i do dance hall like i do do you dance dance hall dance hall music dance yeah hall i'm music. saying you do but do you dance because you yeah, know i was a dancer at some point <laughs> <laughs> Ali, why are you laughing? Uh, <laughs> I guess he has done a lot, really. Uh, actually, from yeah. the look of things. So, Ali, being a, um, an artist manager, so you know sometimes he just talked about the writer's block. I would come back to him to ask mm -hmm. how he manages that. But as a manager, there should be some things you can do to help your artist to overcome the writer's block. For instance, for writers, sometimes they just maybe take a walk, take a shower, sleep. Do What are the things you do to help? Uh, yeah, like um, just as you just said, we 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 actually do that as well. Uh, we encourage our artists to like uh, feel free, really catch the vibe, and uh, it's okay. And um, uh, but I I try my possible best not to let uh, them understand uh, or probably um, feel the need to um, take some stance, really. Mm. Okay. Uh, because if you it, because that is what we see out there yes, right, uh, it, these days. Yes, it's either you actually get it or you don't get it really, mm. as they say in the street really. So, um, if you if you're talented enough, you don't really need um, any substance to actually like uh, 
I'll make you... Um, so uh, what do you think is responsible for this major substance abuse in the music industry? Because even uh, you see some music artists encouraging, promoting substance abuse in their songs. Uh, well, um, it's just... Um, I, I feel personally it's just... Um, uh, let me say... Uh, uh, peer pressures. So I just feel so like... Uh, and the fact that people actually give um, this uh, different um, substance um, power... Um, like the mental state is like if you don't take this stuff you can't actually do this or you mm. need or you actually see a very good artist um go into the system and uh, the next thing um uh, peer pressure or probably like the labels or probably like managers are actually letting them know that you can actually get more better if you actually do this stuff so mm. i personally in my own own space i try my possible best to let my artists understand that you 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 actually own yourself you mm. own your, your 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 talent you own what you think of and uh, yeah don't don't let anything use you you actually have to use it really. interesting so how do you overcome the writers or should i say singers block <laughs> the singers block mm. it's also the writers block actually because you write your songs yeah like from what i said like it depends on your mood and what you are feeling at the moment yeah i'm saying when nothing is coming you want to write a song no no inspiration no creativity nothing how do you overcome it? Mm, I'll just rest my head and sometimes I can actually go to the club, you know, uh, probably like, um, you just know, catch by really, like, mm. um, go out, um, um, you, you get, um, listening to uh, boring conversations and um, <laughs> and all, oh, really. Boring conversations, yeah. indeed. Okay, so, um, Hack, if Valentine's, you know, Valentine's Day is closed and you want to serenade a girl, say uh maybe she's not even your girlfriend maybe somebody just uh told you a friend just calls you and says okay i want to serenade my girl on valentine's day let's go very early in the morning because we did a lot of that back then on campus i saw it no i didn't do i saw it happen <laughs> <laughs> so what what aspect of your music because i know you do a lot of you know different genre genre of music what genre or aspect would you go for um Let's see, I'll do like a bit of both. I can rap and sing, depending on the texture of the beat. Mm. Yeah. The beat, what beat? beat. I'm talking what about early like in the morning early when... In the morning. Yeah, I can decide to do a, like a short verse, like a rap. You do a rap? Yeah. Okay. Just get yourself ready because you know Valentine's close and you might just be <laughs> you might just be doing a lot of that. Well, uh, let's look at this issue we see between artists and managers, artists and record labels. We saw the most recent one between Portable and uh, Kubagidi. Uh, what do you think is responsible for that? Uh, well, um, it's actually like a uh, it's actually a two way um, street really because um, at the end of the day, it takes two to have disagreements. Okay, you can't have this agreement with yourself, really. It takes two, so it's actually um, it's normal. Uh, but uh, but we see it happen a lot yes. these days. A but lot. the issue is this: um, the issue around this um, disagreement is the fact that somebody actually changes mm. or public things breach of contract. Yes. So, uh, for example, now like the um, scenario you just painted, glaring. You should understand that. Uh, the fact that it's actually very difficult to fine tune between business and um, friendship mm. or help when money enters yes the because story uh, changes. that's why it's actually very good to actually um um be specific are you helping this person or is it business uh -huh. okay so for example and um for for an artist um the person needs to uh, be educated really not i'm not talking about having a bs here or, mm. or, or stuff just 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 know what you want yeah know what you want and, and, and know what you don't want really mm. and uh even if you don't really know how to like uh, read the whole long um, pages uh, with your contract ask for help mm. so uh we we're moving in a space where we are actually very well aware so i i i, I feel uh if you actually sign the deal you should actually go through the deal mm. So now, that's it. yes, Hack, I, I'm coming to you now. Okay. Uh, what are some of the challenges you faced as an upcoming music artist? Yeah, like the basically, I think it's getting that platform, that big platform, mm. to like for the audience to listen to 
what we actually do. Are you shy? Are you? Yeah. <laughs> but you, you're dealing with something you're dealing with, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so um, when you do you see that as a challenge, being yeah, shy? I see that being shy. Yeah. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? Yeah. Ali, you? Well, um, I don't think so as well because he's actually a shy person, but uh, when he time to actually turn up really on stage he yeah i know people like up, that so. ordinarily when it comes to talking they might be yeah. uh drawn back withdrawn yeah. but when it comes to performing singing and mm. all that you see their true color yeah mm. okay interesting okay so let's uh look at the ways by which you've been able to break through that you know that uh hurdle of you not you know a lot of people would rather go for the big names other than come for someone who is just up and coming. Have you been able to deal with that hurdle? Sorry, come again. Have you been able to deal with the hurdle of you not getting recognition out there as an up and coming artist? Um, what I do, I just keep on doing my thing and improving myself and try to meet the standard. Mm. And if I can actually um, add to that, um, you know, we, we, we take every show we have like the last and the first show so and we so give, you give you your best yeah so and um and trust me uh he has a lot of best to give mm. really okay so uh, there's a statistics i'm seeing here that says that uh it's by statista actually it says that the music sector's revenue grew from 26 million us dollars in 2014 to 34 million dollars in 2018 and then this figure according to the research projection by statista is expected to grow to 44 million dollars that's by 2023 that's just next year what do you think is responsible for this rapid growth we see in the music industry well um first of all social media and um we and uh, we actually seen a lot of investment and um the fact that everybody actually knows that if whiskey can do it i can do it so there's there, there's a there's a belief um system it's actually far it's far easier to tell somebody you can be you can be a president than uh, telling a kid you can be a superhero. Mm. Probably like a Spider-Man or something. You, <laughs> like, because we've not seen any. Mm -mm. But if you actually tell somebody you can be the next Whiskey, the next Davido, and hopefully the next Mr. Hack, and uh, yeah, so the, the belief system is there. And um, an average boy in um, Mojo Legba or in Agege, in Ikorodu, can actually um, see the, the movement of someone like Zlatan. Mm from the streets and um, he is where he is today or even portable really um, I think I, I actually saw a, a, a old video of portable um, during the NSAS um, movement and, uh, and right now he's, he's in Kenya chilling mm -hmm. so just, just, just look at what that would do for his click. So apparently the music industry is now really contributing to Nigeria's revenue. Yes. Uh, and it looks like things, the narrative has totally changed. Yeah. You know, back then it wasn't seen as a career path. Of course. A lot of parents would not want their children to go into music. Yeah. Saying that it, 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 it was just seen as a hobby. Yeah. What do you think changed? Yeah, uh, what, what changed was um, the fact that we had pioneers really that, that stick to their guns and um, 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 the fact that people actually laughed at them. Um, the light of Two Face that actually went from um, from having a a, a, a small section um, in radio stations to to selling out shows, uh, giving us the first uh, platform really uh, um, with African Queen. Mm. Okay, we I, I know kids really these days may think of whiskey and um, the fact they brought X actually uh, took us to the world. Like people like Two Face have they've actually done did that really, and uh, Afrobeats will go. Um, higher mm. each year, each day, because of the fact that we have a lot of talent. And um, you made um, um, some certain um, um, points regarding to the fact that people actually see uh, uh, being music. A music as a career goal. And um, these days, parents are actually accepting the fact that they are, um, or even encouraging their, their kids to actually like uh, go into music. It's, it's because of um, artists like Whiskey as well, okay? And as well, personally, I feel um, there's a bridge um, gap that, that, that has been um, fixed between the poor and the rich in Nigeria. How do you mean? Okay, uh, just, for, just for example, uh, 
the 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 the, the super uh, wealthy people can actually uh see the need to actually relate to to a hot artist but if i can say okay you, you, like now you see people like um dangote having um trying to settle a dispute between p square and mm. uh, and his brother uh, the, the, the p square brothers mm. so you know uh you see the fact that like uh, an autodella is actually dancing to uh, uh upcoming artist um, um, um song and um invites the artist over without music um that will never have really happened because mm. the only time we see these politicians are probably like uh, probably doing election, but now you see them coming to the, sh the shows really mm. because they know that's how, where they can actually capture the youth. So uh, I think music is that bridge really. Um, Bridging the gap between the wealthy and yes. the poor. And, yeah. Well, let me come to Hack. Now you see a lot of music artists come and say, oh, well, I dropped out from school. I dropped out from school. Uh, you just mentioned two phase. The cool, of course, I've said this several times that just because they say I'm not finished school, you know, and all of that. <laughs> I know you are a graduate. Yeah. Uh, what did you call the course again? IMT? Yeah, I IMT. Yeah, the full. Media technology. Okay, so what do you think is the relationship between being educated, you know, having that, bagging that certificate and music? I feel the education is like kind of like an exposure to for you as a person. So I that is what I feel. Okay, uh, uh, let me throw the same question. To yeah, you. you know, um, um, regarding to education, I I used to like say this. Um, some although most growing up really like we had that a vibe like when you finish school you try and get a job. Uh, that's not really why education is uh, uh, given to you or probably you, you go seek for knowledge. It's actually uh, uh, develop your mind, okay? So you'll be at the... Interact, yes, network. Yeah, so uh, whatever you choose to do after school, trust me, you, you'll be the best at it mm. compared to somebody that did not have that basic um, knowledge. You ask the right questions. And um, that's why you see uh, most people that have issues with their contracts, they didn't ask the right questions before they actually signed. Mm. But once you're educated, this can actually uh, pave way for you to actually know what, what is not and what it is really. Mm. So let's talk about how to push out positivity as against drug, babes, alcohol. How can we change the narrative? You as a music artist manager, you as a music artist, you have a huge role to play in that area how can we change the narrative um uh, i feel it's actually not the artist really that will change the narrative who will the people because art actually imitates life so for example like uh just the other uh, day um uh, i noticed yes we have more so rights saying, hold on so you're saying if the people are doing wrong things then the artist should also no. push out we, the wrong no, information. That's, that's, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying if for us to actually change these social vices, we need to do it where these uh, um, social vices actually happen. That is the society. That I think that's where government comes in. So um, it's it's actually just um, pointing the air. If you tell an average artist not to sing about drugs, girls, alcohol, or yeah, even yeah, about yeah. crime. It's not just about because not singing. It sells. It's about not pushing out the wrong information, not promoting Every, drug abuse, uh, not promoting rape I, and objectifying no, no, women. No, 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 nobody actually promotes rape, really. Like, an average artist can't promote rape. But yeah, it, I'm saying they don't have to maybe promote it in black and white. But you see, girls, but when you objectify yeah. women, you are promoting indirectly. But promoting I want to rape. ask you a question too, as well. But you notice in the music video, right? When Uncle, they're actually uh, making these girls look like a sex uh, object, right? Who are the girls dancing? A female still is it. So it's not it's not it's not just the artist really, it's it's a community. But we can start from somewhere. We have to start you can't somewhere. start you can't start from the top, you have to start from the bottom. That's where the the community actually comes in. So when the when the people because at the end of the day, as an artist, I get my inspiration from the streets. If the street don't actually accept this, where will I get my yeah, inspiration? Yeah, I, I get my inspiration from the street, but I also want to push out the the right message yes so i see that a lot of people are abusing drugs and are objectifying women and are doing all sorts of social vices that yeah. should stop and i think okay how can i change this how can i uh let for instance look at fouls he has done several songs in that regard where he talks about how uh, a woman shouldn't be raped a woman shouldn't be 
you know, a lot of songs like that. Now, can I ask you a question as well? Yeah. Go check the script. Although you are the one that would answer the question. Go, 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 go check out the streams of all these um, social... Um, social so um, it's about the money. Um, technically, like, I'm trying to be practical here. Mm. If you really want to, like, solve these issues, we'll take it down to the street, really. All right, let's not drag that <laughs> any further. <laughs> it's time to get practical. So I, I would like... Maybe it would be both of you or Hack himself to drop us some bars. Definitely Hack will do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, heavenly love with the spice and the ginger. Melanin popping near the heart of a nigga. Malo chick, a name na Adiza. Mr. Domino say now only me the pizza. Eh. Hey. 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 I keep it straight here, the keys to my beam. Hey. 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 Amazing, amazing. Yeah, so let's wrap up the show. Thank you so much. It's been a very interesting time, actually. I've had fun with uh, Aliyu, Aliyu Mahmood, a rapper and music artist manager. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Me. And also with Hack, a rap artist and music artist. Thank you so much for coming on iBrandy Break. All right, that's it for the entertainment segment of iBrandy Break. My name is Omobolanli Adeshi, wishing you a fantastic weekend. Bye for now. Glad to stay with us. And right now, Samson Oloye Day gives us updates from the world of sports. <laughs> yes, we'll start with African Cup of Nations. Oh, That's yeah, sure. the in thing. Did you watch this match? Yeah, I did. I, I watched up until the, the um I watched until the, the it, it ended in a goalless yeah, draw. Yes. yes, I didn't watch the penalty Why? shootout. Why? Uh, scared. For no reason, really. My husband was really for Egypt. He wanted Egypt to win. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think he got his wish. Well, yeah, he did. Let's delve into that quickly. Talking about the pharaohs of Egypt making it into the finals of the third edition of the African Cup of Nations. And it was after a competitive match that ended goalless with the Cameroonians also ruining chances that they wasted during the course of the duration of the game. It ended on the penal luxury of penalties with Egypt winning by three goals to one. And Sadio Mane's prediction at the beginning of the tournament has finally been fulfilled. It's Senegal against Egypt when it comes to who will win the $5 million prize alongside the trophy of this year's edition. Remember, Senegal had booked their place ahead earlier, courtesy of a 3-1 win over Burkina Faso. And yesterday, it went down to the wire with Egypt prevailing over the Cameroonians on penalties. So for Cameroon, despite having two of the um, court tournament's top scorers in their captain, Vincent Abubakar, as well as his strike partner, Ekambi, they couldn't get a goal and they will have to settle for a third place match against Burkina Faso. But at the Olympic Stadium, where Egypt prevailed over Cameroon in, on penalties, it will be Senegal and Egypt when it comes to the 6th of February playing for the title, as well as the $5 million prize that comes for the winners. Let's see who gets that. As the tournament winds down, you should also know that the race for the Golden Boots is still on, although that seems to be, have been locked with Vincent Abubakar on six goals. And um, the closest challenger to him right about now it's probably a can be. We'll see how that pans out during the third place match against Burkina Faso. Now, let's move on from there to the world of basketball, where it was the Los Angeles Derby, if you want to call it. You had the Los Angeles Clippers and the Los Angeles Lakers taking on themselves, and it was the Clippers who edged that one 111 points, I beg your pardon, to 110 points. They won by solitary points, and that was despite Anthony Davis' um, 30 points. Uh, it just couldn't work. You had Malik Monk also contributing. 21 points for the Lakers, as well as um, Russell Westbrook, who had 17 points in the game. But it was all about the Clippers with Reggie Jackson's 25 points and Marcus Morris' 29 points getting them through. So for the Lakers, they're still stuck ninth on the standings when it comes to the Western Conference. And that means they're still within the play-in you know, spot. Remember, the Clippers are also on um, eight on the log. So um, it's a fight to finish for both um, Los Angeles-based teams as they look to sneak into the playoff spots proper which is the top six of every um, conference standing. And that's how much we can take on um, sports updates at this time. Pep, let's see. Who, let, let me put you on the spot, really. Who, okay. who do you think will win, <laughs> Senegal against Egypt? 
I think Senegal, because to a very large extent, they have shown um, that they, they are prepared for this, really. I mean, over time, watching their matches, you can tell that they are really prepared for this and they know what they are doing. They're going for the trophy. And I support them. Finally. I didn't support them when Nigeria was still in the race. But okay. now that we are out, come on, I support Senegal. Yes. Yeah, yeah the one speaking. Not, not because your husband supports Senegal. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's me. It's me speaking. Because yeah, I know you I stopped watching at some point. When, yes, when I stopped. Even yesterday, while I was watching, I just got distracted. Look, Alpha, nobody has scored. I just <laughs> left. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's the intrigue about the game. Sometimes goals come in the other end. Sometimes it's a bit cagey and, you know, teams just have to battle through um, the luxury of penalties. Unfortunately for the Cameroonians, it just, you know, wasn't meant to be. But you have to give credit to Egypt. They are resilient. They did that against the Ivorians as well. You know, mm -hmm. got through on penalties in this round of 16. So this is another one. It's, it's intriguing. Let's see how the you know, final plays out. I, I well, don't want to What do you think? What do you think for the finals? Who do you think will get that trophy? It's difficult. You know, Egypt hosted the 2017 edition. Okay. They got to the finals but lost to Cameroon in the finals by okay. a lone goal. Vincent Abubakar scored the winning goal. Okay. Now Cameroon is hosting Egypt in the final. So it's almost like, you know, a swap <laughs> of some sort, you know. <laughs> but I, I really also feel for Senegal. They've been to the finals just twice and they lost both by very slim Jesus, margins. Yeah. Now this is like being a third time lucky, a third bite at the cherry and you also want, you know, tip them to get it. So it's dicey. Let's just see um, how well, it plays out. You haven't said anything. I've said Senegal. something. Yeah, you said Senegal, right? I've said something. You said Senegal, right? Pardon? <laughs> <Any play? laughs> All right, let's move on to social media buzz right now. I don't know. Samson doesn't like to be caught. He doesn't like... You just can't quote I, him. I that's something I've, I've come to realize. <laughs> he doesn't want to be quoted, but that's fine. Uh, well, you were quoting money. I mean, excitedly. Yes. And you don't want to be quoted. I answered your question. The issue is you're not expecting that kind yes of response. I want to yes or no. Not, not it's not between. a polar question. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very quickly, let's go to the um, social media buzz. This says, can't believe I used to wish I could faint in secondary school. And then we have uh, Bella Lauret Skincare saying, I tried it once. I put broom under my underarm. <laughs> because I heard it will make me faint, but hmm, I didn't faint. Waste, I didn't faint. Wasted effort. And then we have Fab Fresh Sugar saying, especially to avoid punishments or when you forgot to do your assignment or complete your notes. And finally, we have uh, Tosan Monai just saying, one guy like that could really faint. I kept just. <laughs> I kept disturbing her to teach me how to fail. <laughs> you, you have folks like that, really? <laughs> really? Yes. Who could fail? I think my younger brother tried it once. My mom was beating him and I, I didn't know if it was real or not, but he fainted that day and that was the end of you, it. You have folks who, <laughs> I don't know how they come about it, Yeah. but it re looks it, real. Is it like they fit, it, like they try to pretend they, they're not feeling the cane, they're not feeling, I don't know what happens. How did they do it? I know when I was in school, you, you know. You tried it. No, I, I didn't. I didn't. Are you sure? No. I was <laughs> trying, you know, I was, uh, based on upbringing, I was most of, oftentimes, you know, on the good side. Mm -hmm. But I can remember vividly there was a time we were late. And, you know, <laughs> folks like us were the ones that would want to get the kin out. We dance and we do the whole, you know, bring it to your ears. There was a particular guy, you know, you also had those who would just come and like move, that. you know, some, even to the back and they just I was move, like that. you know. But there was a particular guy, we know he's scared. That day he just went, ah. and, we, you know, it was serious. The teacher beat him and thought it was just one of those theatrics until it looked like, oh, it's real, it's real, you know, we rushed him. Only for us to get to the class, you know, poor that. Definitely then, sick bay, you know, you just use hands, uh, you know, students. And then the guy just, you know, not being happy, they pretend. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> how? You know, and, and that was the question, like, how? Because the teacher gave him about two more strokes on the floor. And you, he didn't move. He didn't move. That was when the teacher felt, okay, it seems this is getting serious. Let's. So I, I can understand where people, you know, when people talk about, oh, you have to disturb someone to teach you, but you don't teach people how to faint, really. But apart from fainting, ha ha have there been times you felt something could happen, so you dodge punishment? No, nah, definitely, definitely. You know, when you know, growing up, you do something na nasty and, um, you know, you're in for it. Daddy would probably lock the doors. <laughs> no one would plead, you know, for you and all of that. So you had instances where you just felt like, ah, Oh, I wish I could just probably, you know, disappear, the okay. Spider-Man thing, you know. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I mean, I like talking about childhood issues. Definitely. Now we'll wrap Great up with a quote, and this particular quote is from Henry Ford. It goes, the whole secret of successful life is to find out what is one's destiny to do, 
and then do it. And that's all. Uh, we'll call it a wrap on the show this morning. Thanks for joining us. I am Perpetua Fasomi Peter. Bye for now. And I'm Samson Oledi. Do have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.